Hello and welcome to the One Ascent Market Update for Q3 2022. My name is Cole Pearson and I serve as our President of Investment Solutions here at One Ascent. We are grateful to be with you and delighted to be joined by Dolores Bamford as our Featured Manager Spotlight today. Dolores serves as Co-Chief Investment Officer and Senior Portfolio Manager at Eventide Asset Management. Dolores, welcome to you as well. Thank you, Cole. I'm glad to be here. Great. Well, before I turn it over, I'd love to give just a quick overview of One Ascent Investments, our process, and how we identify best-in-class managers like Dolores and her team, and how that fits into the big picture here at One Ascent. One Ascent Investments was founded in 2017, and so we actually celebrated our five-year anniversary uh, later or earlier this year, excuse me, and that means that many of our strategies now have a five-year track record. On the investment side, we now are 11 team members strong, uh, just over 40 across all of One Ascent, and those investment professionals average just over 16 years of industry experience, and collectively we manage about 700 million in assets under advisement. We primarily serve financial advisors, faith-based organizations, and institutional clients, including pensions and retirement plans. Um, as far as our process goes, our process can really be described in four key parts. Uh, first is values alignment, where we seek to eliminate issuers whose products or practices cause harm. Our goal here is to identify those and eliminate them from the investable universe. Step two is fundamental analysis. This is where we evaluate managers to identify those with the potential to meet our investment objectives. Uh, we're trying to identify the best in class managers in each asset class or category. The third step in our process is what we call impact assessment where we're seeking to elevate the holdings that promote flourishing. Uh, this is for us really an, an important but often overlooked other side of the coin for values-based investing. And as we get to hear from Dolores in just a moment, you'll hear why we're uh, so excited about our friends at Eventide and the work that they're doing there uh, in that space. Lastly, as we tie this process together is portfolio construction, where we take all of these inputs, including other factors and what's going on in the global markets, and we optimize those to achieve our desired characteristics uh, for the portfolio. And so when all of these pieces work together, what that leaves us with is a portfolio that is actively managed, a high conviction strategy that we believe is positively impacting the world. What our investment team then does is tie that into actually a suite of solutions that are values aligned, risk-based, and globally diversified. So that whether you're a client, an investor, or an advisor that works with uh, any one of those, can actually choose the right solution or portfolio to meet the unique needs for you. And so today, for the balance of our time, we're gonna dive in to that manager spotlight and hear from Dolores Bamford of Eventide and what she's doing uh, in her strategy. Uh, just a quick introduction, or a few disclosures quickly from Eventide, and then I'll introduce Dolores. Dolores, again today, serves as the co-chief investment officer and a senior portfolio manager at Eventide Asset Management. Dolores has over 25 years of investment experience um, as a managing director at Goldman Sachs, a senior VP and portfolio manager at Putnam, uh, and before that, an investment research at Fidelity. If her career experience doesn't speak for itself, uh, academically, she has a bachelor's degree uh, in economics from Wellesley College, a dual master's in theology and church history from Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary, and a master's of science uh, from the MIT Sloan School of Management there in Cambridge. Dolores, we are grateful for your partnership and grateful to have you with us today. Uh, welcome, and the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, Cole. Uh, as I shared with you before, I'm really excited to be here, and I, I really do believe that Eventide and One Ascent are so aligned, and so I'm, I'm honored to be here and share with you about Eventide and the equity income strategies. So you can turn to the next slide. Uh, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about our investment team. We have about 25 individuals of experts, and we're very much organized in teams around our portfolios, as well as trading and Business 360, which I'll share with you later, and data analytics. And so at this point, we have about 25 people who report to me um, as co-CIO, and I obviously work with Vinny Grubala and helping to manage the portfolio team and to uh, build our teams and build our capabilities and to scale uh, so that we can build our funds as well as grow our funds, a number of funds. So next slide. So 
uh, just to make sure it's clear to everyone that our purpose at Eventide for the entire firm is to honor God and serve our clients well by investing in companies that create compelling value for the global common good. And next slide. Uh, for the investment team, the investment philosophy that we pursue in order to achieve that purpose is investing in high quality companies that we believe are creating value for others and trade at a discount to their intrinsic value. So they offer superior long-term risk adjusted returns. So that's how we implement our purpose on the portfolio team side and in our investment strategies. So what is high quality for us? It's finding companies that can achieve superior, sustainable and superior returns. And for us, that means looking at companies that have sustainable competitive advantages, excellent management teams, attractive industries that have strong long-term growth profiles, financial resiliency, as you can imagine right now, it being more important than ever, as well as well as creating, uh, creating compelling value for the global common good. So next slide. Uh, for us, our philosophy of finding companies that are high quality and companies that are creating value for others is really uh, reflected in what we call Business 360 at Eventide. And so that is our philosophy, that is our purpose, and that's our process. And for us, Business 360 reflects our analysis focusing on companies that have a long-term competitive advantage in organizing themselves and having a strategy and product that we believe is contributing to human flourishing or to well-being. And we do that by a process of evaluating companies on how they're impact impacting all of their stakeholders. So how they're impacting and serving their customers, how they're impacting and serving their employees, how they're adding value and serving their suppliers, their communities, their environment, and society, in addition to their shareholders. And so we wanted to make sure you understood that we see this and evaluating this as a differentiated approach to analyzing companies and assessing if they're contributing to human flourishing and to long-term value creation here at Eventide. So next slide. We also look at very high level themes, themes or industry trends that are helping to contribute to well being or ones that are harming human being, and making sure that we're focused and in investing in companies that are positioned well within these themes that we call themes of human flourishing and that have a strong growth, long term growth profile, because we feel that that's very important for long-term value creation as well. And so you can see here examples of that would be clean energy, 5G, um, clean water, health and safety, uh, life sciences, um, home ownership, those sorts of things, as well as we can talk about others in terms of how companies are meeting society's most urgent challenges and needs. So next slide. So for the equity income strategies, you know, just sort of in a nutshell, what we focus on, as we said before, is this is a high quality investment approach where we're focused on investing in companies that we believe are going to achieve long term, superior, sustainable returns, income for our clients, as well as positive impact on the world. We are looking specifically at companies that can sustain strong double digit dividend growth. So we're looking for companies that have strong free cash flow and strong earnings growth so that they can also grow their dividends and, sh and show strong income um, contributions to their clients. And then we're also looking for companies that we believe are resilient and can show stability in their earnings and in their growth rate. Um, no matter what happens in the macro environment or in an industry level, that they are tied to their own ability to create value. And so that is cr incredibly important to us that you have that stability and the resiliency in these companies. And finally, that they are contributing to or creating a better world. So next slide. So if you drill down into 
um, exactly how we do that and what we're looking for. Uh, there are sort of five key elements to that. One is assessing management teams and making sure that they are disciplined, that they're mission aligned, that they are focused on also a stakeholder value creation approach and that they are a leader in this area in terms of contributing to a positive impact on human flourishing and that they're positioned well within their industries and that they're solutions providers in their industries that enabling them to grow faster than their industries. And then what's very important for this strategy is that they have that financial strength and the resiliency so they can pay and grow their dividends. And finally, we're looking for companies that are undervalued relative to their long-term intrinsic value so that they will have a long runway of attractive risk-adjusted returns for, for our investors. So next slide. Um, just to understand maybe how our equity income strategies may be different from our growth strategies, the investment philosophy is the same. The themes of human flourishing are the same, but I would say the difference is we're most likely looking more for solutions providers or enablers that are generating a lot of strong free cash flow, as opposed to companies that may be in the earlier stages of their life cycle or innovators or disruptors that you might see in our other high growth funds. Uh, we are very diversified in terms of our industry exposures. Um, as opposed to maybe our growth funds that may have high concentrations in sort of high growth sectors such as technology or biotech. Um, and our growth profile, our companies, I would say is a little bit steadier than for our growth funds. So we're looking for companies that have five to 10% revenue growth or 10 to 20% earnings growth and have the stability in that as opposed to in our growth funds, you know, the companies could be growing 20, 30, 50%. And we're looking for that near term balance sheet strength and strong profitability and the importance of near term as well as long term strong free cash growth, uh, free cash flow growth uh, for sustainable dividend growth. So next strategy, next page. Um, so just to talk to you a little bit about, you know, how we're focused right now in the current very volatile environment and uncertain environment, let's say the team is very much focused on resilience and working closely together and focused on our mission and our investment process, risk control, and managing our portfolios well through a very volatile macroeconomic environment as well as challenging financial market conditions. We continue to be focused on resiliency in our portfolios as well as in our team and making sure that our investments are well tested and perform well in periods of higher inflation, interest rates, market volatility, and economic uncertainty. And finally, we are focused on finding the best ideas, protecting our clients' assets, but also focusing on the best ideas that fit our investment philosophy of seeking high quality and business 360 aligned companies with very attractive valuations for the long term. So, just to conclude our strategy, it's, you know, what are key takeaways, seeking high quality and a lower volatility investment approach, focusing on dividend growth and capital um, appreciation. Now more than ever, seeking resiliency in the type of companies that we own that will continue to outperform even in a difficult market or economic environment and companies that are contributing to and creating a better world. So that's all I have for the presentation. And Cole, I'll turn it over to you. Dolores, thank you for your time and for your partnership. We've had a long partnership with you guys at Eventide and with, with your strategy in particular. And we have got an appendix slide. I'll throw up the performance there. And you can see uh, just a, a long track record of solid performance. But I do have one question for you. Um, the long-term performance of the strategy is excellent uh, relative to its, its benchmark. But so far this year, uh, has lagged through the first and second quarters. And I'd love just to hear from your perspective, maybe what's driven that and, and what you're kind of doing and focusing on um, uh, for the future. Hi, Cole. Yeah, thank you for showing our performance record and um, the near term as well as the long term and, and how to interpret that and how do we be best prepared going forward. I would say the long term record. Uh, 
of our performance to me is a reflection or a testament of our investment strategy is working and that this high quality defensive um, dividend growth strategy is proving to show consistent outperformance versus the value benchmark. So that's one thing. In 2022, we had a very unique event happen that would make a dividend growth strategy underperform maybe uh, sort of a, a high yield or low valuation strategy in that we had interest rates go up 100% in the beginning of the year. We had the 10-year go up 100%. We had investment grade yields go up 100%. And we also had, across the board, interest rates go up dramatically. And so that caused a correction in the market based on valuation and particularly hurt strategies that are higher quality, long-term oriented, and more stable, sustainable dividend growth oriented than those that might be focused on cheapness, right, and highest yield. So because of that, we underperformed in the first half, and particularly, I would say, in the first quarter. But I would say as the market ages and as interest rates stabilize, and as we move into an environment where the economy is slower, that our type of strategy, in my opinion, will start to outperform those other types more cheapest high yield environment. And so I'm assuming that the outperformance will start to shift again as interest rates start to stabilize going forward. So that would be um, my, my description of of how 2022 and into 23 would would develop. Great, thank you. I'll point out just down here at the bottom, uh, on the right hand side, you have calendar year returns, and um, your strategy has outperformed in every single uh, calendar year period, and uh, strong outperformance for the three, five, and since inception, uh, several percentage points, hundreds of basis points of, of annualized outperformance each year. So. Um, we thank you for the work uh, that you guys do. And we thank you for the partnership. And the purpose of this call is to get to spotlight our managers. And we love spotlighting uh, you and your team and getting to allow our advisors and our clients uh, a little bit of a deeper dive behind the curtain, so to speak. And so for uh, thank you for making the time to be with us. For our audience, uh, thank you for investing a portion of your day with us. We, we greatly appreciate your time and value uh, your partnership and interest in One Ascent. So with that, we'll conclude our manager spotlight and uh, you may now sign off. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Cole. Take care. Thank you.